Okay, we're going to talk about a connection I made while doing the SSP, the Safe and Sound Protocol. About a year ago, I posted in my Sound Science Soul Facebook group. Um, if you have not joined that, you can find the link to that in the comments. Um, I posted about my Monday mornings when the garbage truck would come and how that would kind of set off my morning, sometimes even um, a large part of my day, and how that sound was just really jarring to wake up to. And at the time, I was developing um, some, some education around the idea of creating a, a daily soundscape. Um, I do think that's important, especially if you have sense like auditory sensitivity. Um, and, and a lot of people do who have anxiety or even autism, different, um, you know, depression, uh, trauma in general. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that, but I, I made this interesting discovery because I wasn't aware of the SSP when I posted that video, um, but I've become a lot more aware of why I had that sensitivity or, or likely why I had it. And so I want to play that garbage truck video and then circle back so that we can discuss that. Um, so I will uh, play that now for you and we will be back in a minute here. So I'm having this challenge this morning. Um, some of you in this group uh, know that I've created this online course about creating your personal soundscape and it was born out of uh, my own need to take some control of my own soundscape and what an impact I saw in that. Um, and it goes into all kinds of uh, issues with that. Um, our inner symphony, um, you know, is a part of that soundscape and uh, the noise outside around us, um, you know, even social media. Um, but that's not what I really uh, want to talk about exactly. Um, but uh, knowing that I have that course, so that's an important piece of um, making myself a more peaceful person and um, just understanding how sound impacts us. It impacts us on so many levels that we're so unaware of. And so having that awareness for me has been really life-changing and understanding that. And so this challenge I'm having this morning is that um, I keep growing in this and discovering um, new ways to use sound. Um, that's where the uh, group was born out of really was um, and I'm laughing because there's somebody mowing, which is <laughs> another annoying part of my morning, it seems like. Um, and we'll get to that. But uh, so um, having an awareness and um, just being able to create that peaceful soundscape on a daily basis has become really important to me. And um, <laughs> this is going to get really annoying. Um, so it's interesting that this is occurring right in this moment because what happened this morning is, so I'm not a morning person and um, a few months ago I started, or several months ago now probably, I started using um, an app that just gradually wakes me up with the sound of the ocean and I found um, that was really impactful to, um, you know, have that kind of noise and gradual wake up. And then recently I started experimenting with, and again, I'm not a morning person, so this was a hard transition, um, but uh, I started experimenting with actually just waking up um, on my own and um, with the birds, uh, with the window open so I could hear them, and with the sunrise. And um, I felt so great on those mornings that I've been able to do that, and I've actually done that for a few mornings now. And um, even one morning I uh, was able to go out and see the sunrise, and. Um, there's there's something about that energy the vibration the frequency whatever it is about that time and without getting too far into that um, you know there's a lot of research that backs up that as well and um, hopefully you can still hear me <laughs> in uh, earlier um, earlier civilizations <laughs> would have been rising with the Sun and um, resting as the Sun was going down and um, I'm so annoyed right now. <laughs> I hate I hate when anyone mows anyways. It's one of the most annoying sounds to me. Um, so, uh, anyway, so, you know, 150 years ago, we didn't have electricity or whatever. Um, and we were waking with the sun and starting to rest as the sun was going down and our bodies are actually um, built for that. So it really makes sense and um, it's such a peaceful way to wake up. 
and I notice how different I feel when I do that so um, this morning I'm you know I went to bed excited last night actually about waking up in that same way I went to bed early I was so excited you know I'm gonna get coffee in the morning and um, it's gonna start my day off right and it's gonna be a great Monday and um, about the time that I normally start waking up or right right before that instead of waking up in a normal way I had been waking up that gradual wake up hearing the birds and just kind of seeing that sun start to creep in um, through the curtains instead I I woke up to the garbage truck picking up garbage it's this really grating loud metallic sound um, that a garbage truck has and um, it, I ended up with a headache and just didn't automatically didn't I mean I was woke up in a really uh, harsh um, violating way and uh, just this little headache crept in and I just already didn't feel myself and I didn't feel that peacefulness that I really strive to maintain and and I'm thinking like okay so what do I like how do I combat this like this is outside of myself even if I close the window I can still hear it it's still loud um, and now you know it's just affected me I can tell my my vibration is off and um, it's not that peaceful peacefulness that I had planned to start my day with and um, it's funny because it's kind of continued throughout the morning because my cat's been really annoying too and then now the mowing so it's uh, really impacting me this morning this lesson but um, I, I I guess I just it, it made me want to contemplate too like okay so what do I what do I do about this and how symbolic is that because um, you know the peacefulness of the morning the birds the um, you know the Sun the earth just all of that is is that really peaceful state and it's that high vibration you know frequency state um, you know that makes us feel healthier and then the garbage truck could represent um, a really angry person and how often do we face angry people in our lives either personally at work um, you know it might be a customer or a client how often do we face that and have to understand how how do we not allow that to impact us because the only thing we really have control over is ourselves right so but I was like, well, this garbage truck's going to come every Monday. You know, I'm going to have to deal with this every single Monday. And it's not like I can just close the window, like I said. So now I've got this new routine, you know, that feels amazing. And it's out of my control what's going to happen. And so I had to really just think about, okay, so what is, what is in my control in the situation and what do I do with this? And I think the symbolism was the first thing. It was impactful to just understand it on a symbolic level and understand um, how I can apply that to other areas of my life. And then to really think about what I have control of. So I did some journaling and, and decided that what I have control of is I can call upon my tools, which um, I think that's going to be meditation in a few minutes. Um, you know, just getting deeper inside myself and finding that peacefulness and calm again. Um, and then I can prepare for next time. So I may have not been able to do anything this time. Um, and I may have to just, you know, deal with that headache, although it's already going away. Um, but, you know, what do I do next time when I'm faced with that to keep myself in a more, more peaceful state? And I decided that, okay, Monday morning I don't really want to have to get up any earlier, but that's a solution. I could get up earlier. I could actually go for a drive or even go somewhere um, where I can watch the sunrise. Um, I could, you know, just be up in general. Um, and I have this, you know, field by my house where I've watched the sunrise there. So I could just even be out there where I'm probably not going to hear the trucks as much. Um, and that's it. That's the only solutions I've came up with so far. So we'll see how those work. But i um, curious if uh, anyone else is using tools to maintain peacefulness that have to do with sound and, um, you know, what they do when something sets them off. Because, you know, what I experienced this morning is uh, sometimes it's just really, it feels really out of your control, especially in the moment. And like I said, I had, I mean, I couldn't stop the noise. I couldn't... Um, even prevent the headache at the time so what do I do with that you know how what tools do I have how in the future can I um, 
you know, be more prepared for those situations or face them as they're coming up. So I'm kind of learning along with everyone else, but I would love to hear from um, any of you if you're having suggestions of what you do when maybe you're not feeling so peaceful or you've had something um, external impact you and how did you deal with that? Um, you know, using any kind of tools, but especially something that's associated with sound. And when I say sound, that's even the absence of sound. Um, that can be as simple as nature, meditation, uh, you know, prayer, uh, you know, just whatever you can use to impact you so you can have a better day. So have a great day. Hope you. Okay. So we're back. Uh, thanks for watching and, uh, hope you enjoyed that little, that little video. Um, I, I, you could tell I was a little disturbed that day, but anyways, it's interesting to now see that, to look back on it after doing the SSP. Again, I was not aware of the SSP before, uh, when I made that video, I just knew that I had a connection to making a more peaceful soundscape in my life. Um, and so that sound, um, you know, there's, there's actually in our sound science soul group, there's actually others that talk about the sound sensitivity issue and, um, you know, auditory sensitivity is actually a common symptom of anxiety. Um, be, and also because our, our, because of trauma, our nervous system gets good at fighting off threats and it's more tuned into that. Um, and it, tra it struggles to transition into a state where it can engage with others. We know that from, you know, talking about the SSP. Um, there's a, a little article I found um, from New Way, newpathwaystherapy.com about the idea of um, sound sensitivity related to the polyvagal um, informed approach to treatment and the SSP. So I'm going to just share a little bit of that and I'll provide a link here as well. Um, but it talks about trauma and anxiety being, or any kind of anxiety disorder being um, rooted in dysregulation of the autonomic nervous system which is mediated by the vagus nerve, again, that vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve is a complex wandering nerve extending from the neck into the face and all the organs. So it actually is involved in a lot. Um, and then the tone of that nerve determines our ability to feel safe and regulated. So Stephen Porges, who created the SSP, is um, he uses the term neuroception to describe the body's ability to determine if a person or situation are, is safe or not. Um, neuroception is an automatic, auto sorry, automatic response below our conscious awareness. So this is happening at an unconscious level. Um, each person is going to have a different set point for their neuroception of safety, and this can be severely compromised in people who suffer from sound sensitivity. So that's what's happening, it sounds like, is that somebody has had that set um, the bar set a lot lower for that person in what is really jarring to them. And then when a person has extreme negative responses to those specific sounds, um, their nervous system is actually responding to this as a potential threat. So they're shifting into this protective defensive state. Um, even though the, the sound could be very benign, it could be just, you know, something being dragged across the floor or the sound of a fork. Um, you know, uh, somebody chewing, like those things can even be um, triggers for people. But um, the body is interpreting that, that presence of danger by going into a fight, flight, or freeze response. Um, typically, the sensitivity is to lower frequencies. Um, think of the low frequency of a predator. And so we're detecting the low frequency sounds more easily. And then we have an over somebody who's had trauma or has this kind of sound sensitivity for whatever reason, whether it's anxiety, you know, trauma, um, you know, autism, whatever it is. Um, we have this overwhelming ability to then tune into those sounds. So we're hearing those, and are we're a little bit overwhelmed by those too, and we're hearing that more so than other, um, you know, more positive. Uh, good feeling sounds, the higher frequency sounds. So this is really interesting to me to understand now a year later how that garbage truck was affecting me at that time and how much more sensitive I probably was a year ago to that as I was discovering, um, you know, just how sound affects me and, and how to use it. 
to have a more peaceful life. So just wanted to share that because I know a lot of other people struggle with a sound sensitivity issue and the SSP can be one way to shift out of that as well as just having a deeper awareness of what may be affecting you and, and researching using different ways to increase your, your vagal tone. Um, just, you know, even the awareness of it can help as well.